Hello and welcome to Build, where we are coming to you live from London. Now, Christmas is only a few days away, which means one thing, that we're going to binge on a hell of a lot of TV in the coming days. Now, one of the crown in the jewel of uh, the BBC's Christmas schedule this year is the adaptation of The Miniaturist. And today we are joined by three of the stars of the show. Please welcome Anya Taylor-Joy, Hayley Squires and Emily Barrington. <laughs> Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, now, before we get started, if you've got a question for the girls, uh, you can tweet us. We are at Build Series LDN on Twitter, or if you're watching this video on Facebook, you can leave your question in the comments section. Now, girls, welcome to Build. How are you all? Very good. Yeah, very good. You're looking happy all to be here. Very Christmassy. You're all yeah, in the spirit. Really, really, well. really enjoying yeah, that. It's Christmas. <laughs> uh, now, I saw the first episode of The Miniaturist yesterday, and I can confirm it's like perfect Christmas viewing, isn't it? Um, can you give us a bit of an overview about what the show is about and what the, what viewers can expect? Well, I um, I think it really does begin with Nella, who's the character that I play, and um, she's an 18-year-old girl. She's just married into a very wealthy family and she's actually really excited to get out there. But when she arrives in Amsterdam, she realizes very quickly that uh, it's not the experience that she thought she was going to have. <laughs> so that's, that's definitely sort of how it plays out, isn't it? We've actually got a little trailer, so should we take a little look? I have some trailer. Every woman is the architect of her own fortune. What is it? A house. Your house. This house. How did they know what to make? I don't know. The devil finds work for idle hands. No more secrets. Are you reading my mind now? This is witchcraft. The Miniaturist. Boxing Day at 9 on BBC One. Hey, look at our dolls! You're such a little spooky yeah. vibe I know. There. I haven't seen that. They made it look very spooky. I haven't spooky. seen that either. It's that still really cool. creepy to see your little dolls kind of there because you're like, oh my God. And they're all really convincing as well. They are so... The, the woman who made the miniatures on the show, they're incredible. We were all completely obsessed with it. Because normally when like people get dolls made of them, I don't know if you've seen the Emma Watson Beauty and the Beast doll, but that was not good. <laughs> Whereas you guys have got this nailed. Those are great. <laughs> uh, now, you mentioned that you play Nella in the show. She's like the lead character. Can you tell us a bit about her and how she comes to arrive in Holland? Well, again, one of the things that I thought was most interesting is you kind of hear young girl being sold to wealthy man and you're instantly like, oh, that's not really that doesn't feel really great. But she's really excited about it because for her, it's a way of getting out of her own situation. And she's desperate to fulfill what she thinks is the duty of a wife because that's what she's been told that she's supposed to do since day one. And what I love about her is that she's really resilient. And when she arrives at the house and sees that the ground underneath her really isn't that steady, she grows and becomes actually the person that she's supposed to be throughout it. And for all of our characters, I think we're all completely subverting our stereotypes. And that's really fun to play. And then this creepy doll's house is brought into the mix, isn't it? Can you tell us a bit about that and what role that's, that plays in the show? Um, so Johannes, who is Nella's husband, buys the doll's house as a wedding gift for her and something to kind of occupy her with <laughs> while she's in the house, um, much to the um, disgust of his sister Marin. Um, and... Marin comes to Nella and says, you can write to the miniaturist and order parts for the house, um, which she does. And then as it goes on, pieces for the doll's house begin to arrive that shouldn't necessarily be there. That's a kind of reflection of what's beginning to happen in their world. And it's very, it sort of gets very, very dark very quickly early on uh, in the in the episode. Um, but Hayley, your character Cornelia, she also lives in the house with Nella. What role does she have to play in the action? So Nella, um, Cornelia is Nella's maid. So when Nella first arrives at the house, um, the people living there are Johannes, her husband, Marin, his sister, um, Cornelia, and then Otto, who's the kind of man's servant to Johannes. And it's the four of them that live there and have been doing so for quite a few years. Um, and for the first sort of 15 minutes of the episode, you tend to think this is your typical costume drama where everybody's roles are very cliched and the maid sort of lives under the stairs and all the rest of it and then as it goes on you find out that actually these four people who live in this house before Nella arrives hold each other's secrets um, and each other's lives and kind of lies sorry and kind of depend on each other to 
to keep those secrets and, and to protect each other. And without spoiling anything, there is a lot of secrets, isn't there? There's yes. a lot of secrets. <laughs> so it's quite difficult to speak up. about because there's so many, so <laughs> many secrets be, in it. It's, it's I'm really so quiet because I'm thinking, <laughs> what can I actually say Have you found yourself like tripping up? Like when you've been doing interviews for the show, have you found yourself being like, oh, I shouldn't have said that? Well, it's difficult because if people have read the book, then, then they will obviously know the story. But we don't want to give away the best bit of the show, really, which is the, the mystery of um, what's real, what's not, what's magic, what isn't. Mm. So it's quite tricky, isn't well, it? Well, you've got like, quite a sort of mysterious character. And, and again, I don't want to mm. want to spoil it, but can you give us a kind of a hint or a clue as to where your character fits in? Yeah, so I play the miniaturist. Oh, I didn't want to say that, Nella, but OK, <laughs> you've done oh, it, it's okay. fine. Well, well, I said it. <laughs> but, um, Nella writes to to order her miniatures for her house, and then, as Haley said, the things start arriving that weren't ordered and that seem to be telling a story about what's going to happen to Nella. But the bit that, that is uh, mysterious is how the miniaturist is creating these things, um, how she appears to know about what's happening in Nella's life, and that will leave a mystery. <laughs> There's also a really interesting dynamic um, with uh, the lady who plays Narin. Um, you've got quite a sort of a fraught relationship with her when you sort of arrive in the house, haven't you? How was that sort of dynamic to play between the two of you? It was so much fun. We had such a good time. And it really is because Rommel is such a phenomenal actress and she was relishing in how nasty Marin is so much that it was actually quite difficult to keep a straight face because I really wanted to smile. She's got all think, the best one-liners in it, hasn't well, she? Well, you're watching her on the other side of camera and you're sort of like, yes, Romola, like, this is so <laughs> good. Um, but it was, it was really, really good fun to do it because it's always fun to play in those kind of darker, sort of meaner relationships just because you get to really push the envelope a little bit. When you were reading the scripts, was there like a certain part that you were like, oh, I wish I had that line or I wish I was playing that character? Or were you all I quite sort of all happy of them, in your roles? I think all of them are written so brilliantly. And yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why, as we say, the trailer looks as though it's going to be a sort of typical costume drama for Christmas time. And actually, and when I got the call to say it's for the part of the maid, I sort of went, okay, and then read it. And as Anya was saying earlier on, all of the roles are so subverted mm. that actually you go on a huge journey. You know, at the beginning, you believe your role to be one thing, and then the journey that all of the characters go on is massive, and they're all so integral to the story. Is that what you guys kind of, like, look for in a role? When something... Because I guess scripts land in your lap all the time. When you're sort of looking for a part and deciding whether, whether one's right for you, is that kind of important that you are subverting the kind of the typical roles and stuff? It's hard, because inevitably, you do something and people see it, and then the next thing that comes through the door... Is, is similar because somebody's thought of you because they've seen you do yeah. something similar. So I do think I personally am always looking for something that's different uh, because that's what makes our job so interesting, I think, and in that in the yeah. you could easily end up constantly playing the same type of characters because people think of you as that. Um, but actually, that, that wouldn't last very long before you got sick of it, I think. Now, as we mentioned uh, a second ago, it's based on the book by Jesse Burton. Had you read the book before sort of the scripts landed on your desks? I hadn't, but I texted my best friend and said about it, and she got so excited because she'd read it. <laughs> and was like, yes, it's, it's an amazing part. Do yes, it, do it, do, do it. it. <laughs> so I had read it because I'm in a book club of actors, and somebody suggested we read it. Um, and one of the reasons they suggested that we read it is because I collect little miniature things. Oh, I know. I and they were like, oh, there's a book about miniature stuff. You'll love it. And so I read it. And then when I auditioned to be the miniaturist, it just seemed too good to be true. It just fit it. <laughs> it's fake. I know. I nearly took some miniatures to the audition, but that was uh, like, too losery. A lot of actors are kind of split. Like when, when they sort of do adaptations, some people find it really helpful that there's a book to sort of guide them with their performance. Do you find that that is the case? Or do you find that it actually can be a hindrance at some point? I mean, I think it's different for everyone. I was like Hayley, I hadn't read the book before I signed on. And I think it was really helpful for me because all I had was the script and I kind of created Nella the way that I wanted to play her already. And then when I read the book, I think the pressure of portraying such a beloved character that exists in the imagination of so many yeah. people, I think that can start to skew with your brain a little bit. And so for me, at least, it was definitely better to read the book afterwards because then I felt like I had more and more knowledge to add on to it but I had already sort of made my decision about who Nella was to me. I was going to say about that sort of pressure with the expectation that people have of these characters in their head. Is that quite easy to push to the side, or is that sort of quite difficult? I mean, I think it was, Jessie was very close to the process. Jessie Burton, who wrote the novel, she was, she was around on set, wasn't she? And she was 
um, just so excited all the time. And she was very, very encouraging of what we were doing. And I think she just felt, I think having her there and her presence, it was kind of a confirmation that you were doing mm. the right job for the woman who created these characters Basically. to begin with. And so, yeah, her sort of encouragement and excitement just spurred us on, really. Was that also like burning eyes in the back of your head all the time? <laughs> Not really, because she was so supportive and really excited. She's actually in one of the scenes that we did and seeing Jessie's face come in and she was dressed to the nines and she just walked into this world that she had created herself. And it was really, it was a really beautiful moment, actually, because you're like, you made all of this. Mm. And it now <laughs> it's like, it exists. So that's like a little cameo that we can sort of expect in the show, right? Are we, do we know when that moment is or is it sort of left up to... Uh, I mean, we, we know where the moment is, but I'm, am I... Yeah, she, yeah. Comes, she, comes, she comes to a ball. Jessie got to come to a ball, which was really fun. Is that the banquet scene? Nice. I really enjoyed that scene. I was going to say, <laughs> about the sort of the costumes, and they're sort of like a huge part of any sort of drama like this. Did you enjoy sort of the dressing up process? Because I'm guessing that must be quite extensive when you go into sort of hair and makeup and, and costume every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, massive. Sorry. We're just um, thinking about the corsets. Yeah. Oh. One of my one of my fondest memories is actually where we have a scene where we're all chasing each other at one point, and obviously you can't run the whole time because you know at some point the camera's not on you anymore. <laughs> and so Emily would run first, and she'd stop at this kind of like dead end street, and she'd be heaving, and then I'd show up, and she'd like <laughs> give me a hug, and we'd heave together, and then Haley would show up, and we'd have like a second of just like, <gasps> okay, go again, go again, go again. But um, I mean, it definitely adds so much to what you're doing because everything about your body is different. Like the first day that I was in a corset, I'd never worn one before and I was genuinely like, oh my God, how am I going to do this job? And um, eventually I think you just started to lean into it a little bit. Yeah, you sort of adapt. I mean, I think the thing about the, the costume and makeup and every element of the miniaturist was so important. Um, the kind of level of detail of the creative team on it was just, Intense, wasn't it? It was so incredible. I mean, we all went through quite a few um, hair and makeup fittings because they had so many different options and the amount of research they'd done. And I think when you watch it, you can see it, mm. it, it creates a completely immersive world. Yeah, I guess you get to in actually inhibit those characters. When you're dressed Mostly. up as them, it sort of changes your performance, as you say. Exactly, because they used materials and things that they would have used at the time. So no nothing was faked, yeah. was it? There was no hidden zip in anything. It was all, <laughs> it was all done. No, exactly. there was not. No, it was completely So how long did real. it take you each morning when you went in to shoot? How long were you in, sort of, costume? For? I was really quick because I had no... No makeup on, as usual. No makeup on. All my hair was kind of scraped back, and so mine was really quick. But you two were a while, yeah. weren't you? They created these sort of spaniel ears of hair on me that took absolutely. <laughs> you looked amazing. Yeah, because your look though. in the show is quite sort of. Um, it's not the same as like maybe your characters. No, it's that's a bit very of a different look, isn't it? To sort of put mm -hmm. her in a different world, and because she's come from somewhere slightly different, they they did something that looked so bizarre and unusual but was perfect within the realm of it <laughs> what about spaniels. the guys as well because some of the guys costumes i guess like did people have to grow their hair and did alex have a weave was that he had a wig yeah, yeah. it was weaved in wasn't yeah. it <laughs> so he actually had to go home with that hair at the end of it came day. off every day oh, yeah. Okay. yeah no i think God it was a wig alex. that came off every day but i mean anya for example was in i mean there were there's very few scenes that you aren't in and I remember there were certain days where it was lots of little bits and when I looked at the schedule and the amount of changes <laughs> and each of my changes took about 40 minutes to an hour oh, and so God, like costumes were just we'd get in change all of it and then you have to change the hair and the accessories with it and if it hadn't been for um Jill our makeup lady she was just so unbelievable and by the end of it costume makeup and I were spending so much time together <laughs> and we were we were like a little unit we could just get things on really quickly but it was it, it was intense your own personal dresses I love it um <laughs> now obviously the other character of the show is the doll's house itself were you in between takes, were you just sort of messing around and playing with it and reliving your childhood, or was it sort of a possession that you weren't allowed to touch when you weren't shooting? We weren't really allowed to touch. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of terrified of it, to be honest. I mean, there are all these little scenes where you're holding all these tiny little things, and the camera's here, so you're sort of like extending your hands like this, and they're so small and delicate. I was terrified that I dropped something. I didn't break anything, though. No. Oh, wow. Very, That's yeah. impressive. I, I, felt, I, had a I felt very session, lucky. I had a session with a real miniaturist, a guy that came in that d made some of the little yeah. things so that they could teach me how to make something. Um, and I, first of all, mine were obviously dreadful. It was just like, here's my <laughs> rubbish little pile of metal. Um, but I couldn't believe how much time it would take to make each thing, so I didn't really want to mess around with them. Because if you broke it, that was like two weeks of somebody's work that yeah. had been destroyed. 
It was one of those jobs where you spent a lot of time looking at what everybody else was doing. As an actor, you sort of go in and get on with what you're doing, but this was one of those jobs where you, you spend so much time obsessing over what other people have created, like the miniatures or like hair and makeup or costume. It became a, a little bit fascinating to watch what everybody else could do. Now, obviously, it's set in the 1600s in Holland, um, but when and where did you actually film this all? Did you get to go to Holland, or is it filmed in some studio up in Elstree or something? We did go to Holland. Yeah. What was the, the name of the place? You uh, went Leiden. There. That was it. Where I'd been on a school trip when I was 11, so <laughs> the memories like, I know of this flooding place. back. Yeah, I've been to that cafe. Nostalgia. Um, but then we filmed a lot around London and all these sort of interiors. Uh, what was the place called? Luton Who? Was that Luton what the place? Luton in Luton. Luton. Very glamorous. Yes, yes. No, very so glamorous. You had to say it. You had to be like, Luton Who? <laughs> but the place in Leiden, we were there for the first week of shooting to get a lot of the exteriors and the big church scene um, and your very specific light. And that was lovely. We yeah. all got excited because we thought we were going to be in central Amsterdam for a week. And then we were in this tiny little town. But it was really beautiful, wasn't yeah. it? It was really nice. Did you shoot it in the summer? Were you, you weren't dressed up like that in the, in the blazing heat, were you? No. Sort of I mean, it was coming on for sure. There was certain, I'm a bit of a vampire, and so I was outside and I'm like, oh, I'm so reflective. Um, but no, I think we, we started shooting in Mar March. 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 Yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. That's fine. Obviously, we said it's set 400 years ago, but do you think there's kind of elements of the story that are going to sort of reflect back to modern society? Because there are some sort of themes in there, which I know some of you, you won't be able to touch on all of them, but there's definitely stu stuff that resonates, I think. Absolutely. I mean, I think, again, what's so lovely about all these characters is that you think that they're going to be stereotypes of themselves, but they're actually all really modern, and they have very modern desires and wants and, and morals, actually. And so it was, it's really interesting, because I think sometimes you can hear period drama, and people assume, like, you have to act in a period drama way, but they're just people yeah. living yeah. in a different time. I think the theme of feminism is very, very strong, and um, with all of the women in the show, all of their roles are, are challenged and they find it very difficult to kind of fit within that box. Um, I think the core of the household are a group of people who are sort of considered to be living or trying not to, trying to fit into a society where they, they should sort of should be living on the edges of it for different reasons. Um, and also the sort of, ex the, the exterior world outside of the house is this very, very strict Puritan puritanical state and so I think we can definitely, it definitely reflects back on society, the sort of government and what they're bearing down on us and how we live within that as in, in society. Yeah. Um, now, there obviously is a lot of um, period drama on this Christmas. You are just one of the ones that is on. There's Little Women, there's Victoria. Why do you think it is that as a nation we just love period dramas? <laughs> It's so immersive. It's like you literally get to take a break and go back and journey into a different world. And especially, I mean, BBC, the way that they do it, it's so, or at least for our show, I haven't seen the other ones, but it's so sumptuous and opulent. And it's, it is just a bit of like a mind break. You get to jump in and, and see a fairy tale in a way. I guess if you're having a bit of a rubbish Christmas, <laughs> you can just tune into this. It's going to be a feast for the eyes. Yeah, just like loads of really nice food and yeah. then sit in front of this. You're just going to feel like... are incredible. Yeah, it's going to be quite um, indulgent, I think. Are you all going to be sitting down and watching it on Boxing Day or have you like, just like had enough of it now? Uh, that, that'll be the first time I see it because I haven't been able to make it to the, the screening. So I will be there with my whole family. <laughs> Forcing them to watch my it. My family will be the They will exactly all be watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my family will all be in front of it. I'm uh, just forcing my friends onto it. I'm like, watch it on Boxing Day. I'm not here. <laughs> Up the numbers. Uh, we've had a question come in on Twitter. Uh, and Julie wants to know, what do you all like to watch on Christmas Day? What's your traditions? I quite like watching a classic Christmas film, like It's a Wonderful Life, or Gone with the Wind, even though that's not Christmassy, but something that's long where there's time for a nap where you can be watching it, have a nap and wake up and it's still on, basically. And you still get yeah. what's going yeah. on, yeah. yeah. I, know the, I know the one. How about you guys? What do you like watching? Um, it would, back in the day when I was a kid, it would be the Only Fools and Horses Christmas special. Oh, that was like the, That was like the key to Christmas. But now that that's finished, um, it sort of depends on... We, we normally get told to turn the TV off, actually, and play, and play like cards and socialise with each other. Or, or a Christmas film that we can all fall asleep to. That works as well. <laughs> uh, have you got plans for Christmas this year? Are you all back home or are you sort of working around Christmas? I've got one week and a half more and then I'm done for Christmas. And I'm really <laughs> excited. Yeah, no, I just haven't got a chance to see my parents or my dog in a really long time. So I'm excited to just spend some time with them and be like, ah, 
Chill yeah. out with the dog. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> By the fire. Just with family. Just eating too much and sleeping is my plan. <laughs> Same. Family. Taking the cat home for Christmas. If oh. anyone on Twitter's got any tips about how to move a cat from one place to another, then I need it. It's tough, right? <laughs> it is tough. I've done that before. It's not a, it's not a She's not easy like experience. She's not going to like it. No. Um, now, looking ahead to 2018, what are you sort of hoping that the next year will bring for you guys? Anya needs a holiday. I know you've got some very exciting <laughs> projects. <laughs> holiday for Anya. A holiday for Anya is what we all want. <laughs> no, I mean, I, re I really hope, and it's not just like speaking, you know, from me, but I hope that the whole world is in a place where things are just a bit more settled down and less chaotic and hopefully pushing towards a, a better future is my very sappy but honest answer. <laughs> How about you guys? Yeah, just a little bit of positivity. I think when you're working sort of consistently in this industry, it's very difficult to ignore what's happening in the world, and sometimes it can be um, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So yeah, just a sort of more more peaceful year, I think. Yeah, to and open, world peace. World peace. <laughs> <laughs> to open Twitter and not have to immediately turn it off yeah, again. Yeah, exactly. That would be great. And you're also starring in Mutants next year, right? Yeah. Which sounds really really exciting. There's some big names involved in that, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, we we had a really, really good time and it was really nice just because we are all kind of the same age and I think we all knew that we were undertaking something that was really big. Um, so it's just fun to go on the journey together and also, I mean, you're playing a comic book character. The, the rules do not apply. You can do anything, so it's really fun. <laughs> Very different to this kind of stuff then. Yes. <laughs> and I know there's going to be some humans fans in the house that want to know some Series 3 gods. Yeah, well, Have we're filming it now. So, right, um, so is yeah. there anything that you can tell us? Just one little tidbit. Um, I'd say it's gone even more international and sort of epic scale. So the domestic storyline's still there, but it's growing away and away from that as well. And Hayley, what's next for you? Um, I'm doing a film in January with Ben Wheatley, which I'm very excited about. Um, and then I've got a film to write, which, I'm in the <laughs> which um, was always a little project and um, sort of... No pressure, and now some pressure has been applied because it looks like it's actually going forward. And so I've got to, um, I've got to isolate myself, not speak to anyone, <laughs> eat too much food, sleep, <laughs> and write this film at some point. Is it your first one? Yeah, it's my first screenplay. Why? Wow. So how are you sort of going about the writing and creative process? Has that been easy to sort of get into? Um, well, I've written for a few years for theatre, but. Um, no, it's not particularly easy just because you know you're not going to see anyone for a while and you're going to spend an awful lot of time on your own. But um, <laughs> it's, it's always good. I always find if you watch TV that inspires you or films that inspire you, then you kind of get the, you get the juices flowing again and you get a little bit of momentum into, into cracking on with it. Oh, well, guys, it's been so lovely chatting to you. Sadly, we've run out of time. But um, we should just say The Miniaturist is on Boxing Day, 9pm on BBC One. In the meantime, please give it up for Anya, Hayley and Emily. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much.